Today, the, the title for my message is, And Opens the Door. Yeah. And Opens the Door. Interesting little title, but we'll find out where that came from in a few minutes time. But Peter stood at the door. He stood at the door knocking. And we have a picture of that situation, of an artist's rendering of what that might have looked like. Peter stood at the door knocking. That you'll find that in Acts chapter 12. You can give that a read sometime, maybe this evening or sometime this week. Give Acts chapter 12 a read. And you'll see how he was in prison. He had been in prison and people prayed, prayed, prayed. Oh, please let him out of prison. And next thing you know, they hear his voice outside the, 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 the door. Rhoda, the woman there, went over to the door I hear the voice of Peter. Peter, that must be. <laughs> and she can't believe that it's, well, she finally believes that it's Peter. It's got to be. That's his voice. But she's so excited, she does, oh, she forgets to open the door, and she runs back to tell her, Peter, it's Peter, it's Peter. Well, didn't you let him in? <laughs> no, she forgot to let him in. Well, she go back. But what were they doing? What were they, what did she, what happened to her? She listened, heard his voice. And this is what I'm trying to say today, is listening to his voice. But Peter was able to do great works through the one who empowered him, the Holy Spirit. He just had given a big sermon, you remember, Acts chapter 2, how he was there, of course, at the time, the leader through whom the information, the sermon came, the brethren responded to that, you know. They cried out, what shall we do? And he gave them the, the lesson of being baptized and repenting, so forth. And the Holy Spirit came upon the, the brethren. The monumental event, the Holy Spirit came. And the, the life of Peter changed because of that. Well, the same thing is happening to us. We're being called. We talked about being called. We're here. We're in a process of being changed. Peter changed, his whole life changed. And there's a relationship that we're having with our Lord Jesus Christ. And so this title, and opens the door, not that door, but our door, the door into our minds, brethren, the door into our hearts. If you'll turn to Revelation 3, we'll go to a verse where this title that I have comes from. Acts, no, not Acts, Revelation chapter 3. Revelation chapter 3. There's a long story here about these churches in Revelation, but we're only going to concentrate on this one section right now. In verse 20, it says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice, and here we go, and opens the door. I will come in to him and dine with him. The old King James says, sup with him, and he with me. How many of you would like to have Jesus Christ come and have supper with you? If I'm in my house and I'm sitting there at my kitchen table, and I'm having dinner, whatever, and I hear a knock on the door, boom, 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 boom. Wonder who that could be. Go over there and open the door. And it's Jesus Christ, if I could know what he was and who he was. And he says, I would like to come in and have supper with you. Would I let him in? <laughs> or would I say, oh, I can't let you in because, oh, I'm not fixed up. I don't have enough food. Oh, da, 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 da. Whatever reasons and excuses I could come up with. No, 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 you can't come in right now. Do we ever say that in our minds right now? He's not literally at the door that door or any other word, my door, your door, not a literal door, your mind's door, knocking on your door saying, I want to come in and have a relationship with you. I want to have supper with you. What do you do when you have a supper with somebody? You fellowship, you're visiting, you're conversing, you're enjoying one another's company. He says, I want to come in and sup with you. That old word, I love that word, sup with you. There's a relationship, this bonding of, of kinship that he wants with us. 
And we went with him, actually, don't we? We're here in order so that we can develop a greater relationship with this one we call Jesus Christ, who is God, in the who came in the flesh, and who gave his life for us, and is wanting and desiring, knocking on the door of our minds, Bill, dink, 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 Bill, are you listening? Bill, are you home? Sometimes I'm not home, you know. You know that. I make these big mistakes. Jeannie knows that. I make lots of mistakes. Bill, are you home? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I want to be, I want to be home for you. Opening the door opens the door for you. But you know what gets in the way of that is our sin. When we do things wrong, like if I'm doing something wrong in that house, and he knocks on the door, and I go over to open up, and I can't open, oh, I'm doing something wrong in here. And I know I'm doing something wrong in there. Do you think I'm going to allow him in? You better not. <laughs> Wait till I get this straightened up first. Let me, you know, clean up a little bit before I let you in. Well, is that what we're doing? To let him in? He's wanting to come in all the time. So, let's look at some other aspect of Jesus, if you will. Acts, no, no, not Acts. <laughs> John, book of John, chapter 10. Another aspect of this wonderful Savior we have. John, chapter 10, and verse 1 to 4. John, chapter 10, verses 1 to 4. It says, Most assuredly I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door but climbs up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. We're going to another analogy, brethren. We're going to an analogy of sheep and a shepherd, in this case. And the shepherd is the one calling these sheep out. And the guy comes in there, and he's not exactly the same one. He's an imposter, this guy comes in. And he's, he's, someone, he's, a, he's a thief and a robber. But what is his objective? Is to get you, to get that you, the sheep. I'm going to make meat of you. Well, are you going to let him in? But he, but he who enters by the door is the sheep. He, but he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. Who let him in? Would you let him in? How would you know to let in the right one? You remember. The people let <laughs> Peter in. What did they do? They heard his voice. So it says in verse 3, To him the doorkeeper opens, and the sheep, what? Hear his voice. And he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And when he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him. Why? For they know his voice. Ah. Oh. Oh. They know his voice. So there's not just the visual. In our case, there's no visual to this. We can't see an individual. We can't see a person. And we don't really literally hear a voice. Well, except there's thunder. Maybe when the blue angels fly over, we hear that, you know, or we when there's liter when there's thunder, there's that sounds like the voice of God, maybe, but that's still a physical sound. So we're listening for a spiritual sound, aren't we? Something that's deeper, something more profound. Where is his voice now for us? How do I hear his voice? And I'll tell you, back in the, <laughs> some years ago when our churches were splitting, and I was not sure which to do. And I was in my closet, literally pra praying, Father, to help me understand what to do and where to go. Because I didn't know at that moment where, which one to follow. And so I thought that with our former, one of our former associations, I was staying with them thinking that God was going to solve the problem. I'm waiting for God to take care of the problem. Why aren't you leaving, Bill? Because I'm waiting for God to take care of the problem. Well, I'm praying, you know, and meanwhile, a friend of mine had sent me some literature that 
had to do with United. And when I was starting to read the literature of the United, I could see, I could hear the voice. Can you, can you, when you read the scriptures, do you hear the voices as though there are voices coming out of the Bible? Is the Bible real enough for you that you hear the voice of it? It's not a physical voice. It's a spiritual vo entity that you're hearing these words. And Jesus said, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. So what are you hearing when you read these words and you're getting it? And this, when I was in the closet with that prayer of what to do, he said like to me, Bill, you already know what to do. Don't you already know what to do? Follow me. And so I, yes, sir. I knew what to do. <laughs> and then I knew where to go. And I knew to tell the pastor of the other organization, I can't come here anymore. He says, I understand. And we left in good company. We shook hands, and I'll see you later. But I made my move and knowing that I was on the right track. And I did it again when we had split again. Did the same thing. Where are you? Where are you? I want to hear your voice. You know, and when you hear his voice, then we know which way we're going and we follow. So we're dealing with a world now that's full of voices and noise and cacophony and sound. If you listen to the radio, listen to the TV, listen to the news, listen to all the stuff going on. Aggravation, aggravation. You know, what about the Supreme Court? What about the abortion? What about everybody has a different argument about all this stuff? Where is the voice of Christ in all of that? I'm listening. I want to find the voice of Christ. Where is your voice in all that? And you find it in the prayers, in the Bible study. When you get into here and you listen for his voice. But what, is, what do we need then to be doing? In Luke chapter 12, Luke chapter 12, 35 to 37, Luke chapter 12, 35 to 37. It says, let your waist be girded and your lamps burning. We have these ladies. If the ladies show up, they, there they are. These ladies represent us, brethren. They're better looking than me. But, <laughs> and maybe a lot of you, <laughs> but nevertheless, they represent the church is the bride of Jesus Christ. And the church is readying itself to be married to him. And these ladies represent us. They're coming with, and they've got their lamps. It says, let your waist be girded and your lamps burning. And they've got the, the little waist thing with the oil. They've got little oil pellets there to cap have enough oil. And, you're, and you're, it says, let your waist be girded and your lamps burning and yourselves be like men who wait for their master. How about ladies that wait for your master? When he will return from the wedding, that when he opens and knocks, they may open to him immediately. Blessed are those servants whom the master, when he comes, will find watching. Assuredly, I say to you that he will gird himself and, ha and have them sit down to eat and will come and serve them. Jesus came to serve. You remember we read in Matthew 20 how he came to serve. I did not come that I would be served. I came to serve, Jesus said. So one of the things that we know about the sound of Jesus' voice is it will have the attitude and nature of a servant in it. The characteristics of wanting to serve. It will have the characteristics of love. It'll have the characteristics of patience, mercy, the fruit of his spirit, Galatians 5. You read all those descriptions, all the sounds of his voice will have those things in them, interlaced with the words. There's never anger, there's never hostility, there's never resentment, there's never um, persecution or, or accusation. Accusation is the tool of the, of the adversary. He's the accuser of the brethren. So. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. And we're going to be ready. We have to be ready, brethren. We're going into some real tough times. It's going to get way tougher than it is. We're not even in it yet, brethren. 
we're going to get into some real stuff going on. And the church may be feeling some, some persecution. Jesus said we'd have persecution, right? So let's open the door to, his, to him. Keep it open, discerning. Oh, please show me where you are and help me to keep tuned in to you always.